Section 1. You will hear a man called Tim and a woman called Laura discussing preparations for their holiday. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Our plane tickets arrived this morning. It reminded me how much there is to do before we go. Let's write everything down, shall we, so we don't forget anything? Yes. And last time we went away, we almost forgot to collect our currency from the bank. So let's start with that. Good thinking. And wasn't there an appointment you said you'd got to cancel? Yes, the hairdresser. Thanks for reminding me. Can you write that down too? The shop will be closed now, but I'll do it first thing on Monday. OK. Then starting on Tuesday, we've got to take the tablets we got from the pharmacy. We really mustn't forget to do that. We're not protected against malaria till we've been taking them for at least seven days. No, so that's really important. And what about shopping? There's still a few things we've got to buy the next time we're in town. We need some more sunblock, don't we? We've only got that Factor 10 stuff. It won't be strong enough. I've already bought that. But what we do still need to get is sunglasses. The ones I've got aren't good enough, and I don't think yours are either. OK, I've noted that down. And I think I'm going to get another bag, too. Just a small one. We always seem to come back with more things than we take. <laughs> Shall we get an extra lock for our suitcase as well? Just in case the one we've got breaks. They don't seem to last long. Yes, they are a bit flimsy. OK, right. Oh, yes, and we need an adapter for our electrical things. Your hair dryer and my shaver. The plugs on them are bound to be the wrong type. We could get one at the airport. They always have them there. Well, I'd rather get it beforehand, so I'm writing it down. And then I think that's it, isn't it? I think so, as far as shopping's concerned. But we also need to order a taxi to take us to the airport. We should do that well in advance. My sister left it too late and she had to take the train with that huge suitcase of hers. I know. She really struggled with it. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. Now let's see. Your mother said she'd come in regularly while we're away. So what do we want her to do? I'll write some instructions and we can give them to her tomorrow. Good idea. Well, the cat's the main thing. OK. Feed the cat. We ought to leave her the vet's details as well, just in case there's a problem. Yes. Have you got them handy? Hang on, I'm just looking. Yes, his name's Colin Jeffrey. Is that spelt with a G? Actually, it's J E double F E R E Y. Quite an unusual spelling, isn't it? Hmm. And his number? O treble seven five nine four one two eight. It's a mobile. Okay. And you should write down where it is. It's 4th Street, not sure what number, but it's next to the bus stop, isn't it? That's not a very good landmark, but it's on the other side of the road to the church, so I'll tell her that. Uh, let's hope she won't need a vet anyway. <laughs> yes. Right, apart from that, there are the plants to water. 
Ask her to make sure they don't dry out. Oh, yes. And I've already mentioned the problem with the boiler, and your mum said she'd come round to meet the heating engineer and let him in. Yes. It's a lot for her to do, but we really need to get the problem sorted out. And the earliest date I could get an appointment was April the 30th. Isn't it the day after we go? Yes. We leave on the 29th, and she'll have to hang around till the job's finished. Oh, well, she won't mind, I'm sure. She likes helping people out. Yes, she does. OK. That's it then, I think. Unless you can think of anything else. Not at the moment. Leave the list there and I'll add to it. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Test 4. Section 2. You will hear a talk on local radio about a short film festival in the town of Adborn. Now you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen and answer questions 11 to 16. Today we're pleased to have on the show Fatima Johnson, who is the organiser of the Adborn Film Festival. Welcome, Fatima. Uh, hello. Can you tell us a bit about the background to the festival and what it brings to the town? Well, the festival was started in 1996 by the then mayor of Adborn, Joanne Smith. She wasn't a filmmaker herself. She'd actually been a very energetic tourism development officer for many years. But Adborn had run a classical music festival, which had been becoming less and less popular in recent years. Joanne was looking around for something to replace it and to use funds allocated to it to promote something which local people can enjoy. <laughs> Great. So, tell us about the festival nowadays. Well, it's held in the last two weeks of August every year, and short films from all over the world are shown in three places, uh, in the theatre and our two cinemas. Several films are shown in one performance, and the whole thing lasts about 90 minutes. Tickets are very reasonably priced, under 12s used to get in for 50p, but now we charge just £1, which is still very good value. £1.50 for students and £2.50 for everyone else. Performances are advertised all round town and also on our website, www.adbornfest.com. If you're interested in attending any performance, you can buy tickets online, of course. And you can also get them in the library, which is right next to the main shopping area. I'm afraid this year tickets are no longer available from either of the two cinemas because of restricted opening times. Uh, I understand you also run a film competition? Yes, for under-18s. We have a different theme every year. Last year, for example, the theme was Future Planet – and the winner was a ten-minute documentary encouraging youngsters to be more aware of environmental issues, focusing on getting school kids to cycle to school instead of going by car. This year, the theme is Sporting Nation, so there'll also be lots of ideas to choose from. Now, we're always on the lookout for new local talent, so if you live in the Adborn area and are under 18, you should have a go. We have an excellent prize every year donated by local businesses, shops, hotels, etc.
This year, you can win a high-spec movie camera worth over £800. Application forms are on the website, and the deadline for sending in your film to enter the competition is the last day of July. It's May now, so you'll have the whole of June to be working on it. Now you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. And what are the judges looking for? Well, although we choose very topical issues like the environment, we're not looking for propaganda, you know, trying to get people to do something. <laughs> Instead, we're looking for a new angle, a fresh way of looking at a theme. And of course... Because it's a short film festival, it's not really about a fully worked story with well-rounded characters. It's more about good photography, conveying things visually. Mm. And who judges the films? A panel of three people who know a lot about film. We've used the same judges for many years and we're very happy with their expertise. One thing we probably will change next year, though, is we want to add another class and another prize for older filmmakers. We'll keep it at a maximum of ten minutes, though. The length works well for our festival. We also want to use different venues for the film shows, such as community centres and at least one school. It might make performances more accessible to a wider audience. We did explore the possibility of having late-night showings, but that's unlikely to happen in the coming year. So, as I say, if anyone's interested in submitting a film for our competition, go on to our website and you'll be able to access everything... You that is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3. You are going to listen to a conversation between two students talking about a lecture they have just attended. First, look at questions 21 to 24. There are four alternative answers, A, B, C and D, for each question. Decide which alternative is the most suitable answer and circle the appropriate letter. Henry, don't you think Dr Adam's lecture was really very good? He could talk about the telephone directory and make it interesting. All his lectures are like that, Astrid. He's just one of those people. I wish we had him as our tutor. I bet you that he is very demanding, though. Boris is in his tutorial group and agrees that he is a brilliant lecturer, but he puts them under a lot of pressure. Hmm. But don't you think that's good? Perhaps. But I am glad to have Dr Adams as a lecturer. He's interesting and rather funny and puts just the right amount of pressure on people. 
Did you take lots of notes in the lecture? Yes, actually I did. In fact, several pages. I didn't think I had taken so many. I was that busy listening to what was being said that I didn't take many notes. Can I photocopy yours? I don't think that's such a good idea. You won't be able to read my handwriting. And sometimes I write them in English and sometimes in Arabic. Oh, let's have a look. Wow! Your notes are so neat. There's not much Arabic. There is on this page. Oh, yes, there is. Dr Adams would be pleased to see this, especially given what he was talking about. Don't you keep careful notes? Mm, sometimes. It depends on the lecture. I don't think I'll forget Adams's lecture today, but some of the detail will fade. Before the conversation continues, look at questions 25 to 30. I type up everything afterwards so you can have a copy then and you can fill in anything I have missed. I'm not so good on the broader concepts. I'm better when it comes to detail. Just what Adams was talking about. Well, I am definitely a detail person. I need to have everything written down before As I can get the concepts As you listen to the next part of the conversation, and I no am the complete opposite. Words. For questions I find all the detail to clutters up my mind and I get and very frustrated, to 30, which was just what he was on about. No more than two he mentioned words a book he'd for each answer. He mentioned several. The one on space and the individual? Yes, called My Space. It's on the book list. So it is. I think I'll get that out of the library or, or get my own copy. Did you get what he said about spatial awareness? I didn't really. Oh, yes, it was fascinating. I can't be as eloquent as Adams was, but I know several people who are frighteningly intelligent, but they have difficulty reading simple directions, even when getting to places that they know very well. Hmm, I find that difficult to understand. Everyone learns the way to walk to the shops and things like that. You mean just the way people learn spelling? You know people misspell words, make mistakes in countless areas of their lives, and going in the right direction is just the same. Remember what Adam said about the number of people who cannot tell left from right, north from south, and so on? Do you know which way is north? It's, um, that way. You see? I couldn't have told you that. Really? I haven't a clue which way is which. That's why I'm always getting lost when I go out on my bike and put me in a completely new place and I am totally lost. What about maps? I'm hopeless at reading them. But then you're brilliant at writing essays and getting all the ideas down in the right order and I don't know where to start. Again, just what Adams was talking about. What we need to do is combine our skills. You teach me to cope with detail, and I'll teach you how to string concepts together. OK, we can do that. Which way is the library? It's... Uh, you're making fun of me. <laughs> That's the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 4. You are going to hear a lecture on fishing. First, look at questions 31 to 36.
As you can see, there are four alternative answers, A, B, C and D, for each question. Decide which alternative is the most suitable answer and circle the correct letter. Good morning again, ladies and gentlemen. And in case you've forgotten, my name is Dr North from the Marine Habitat Research Unit at the University and I'm going to continue from the lecture that I gave a fortnight ago on humankind's relationship with the sea from a historical point of view and also on attitudes to different types of fishing. In today's talk... I would like to focus on the current problems in the fishing industry in Europe and, in particular, the present scarcity of marine fish. As with the last lecture, I've placed a book list, a few relevant articles and a copy of this lecture on the department website. A statistic to begin with. Since the 1970s, stocks of the most heavily fished species have fallen, on average, by 90%. And why has this happened? Well, there's a chain of events which begins with the demographic changes that have taken place in the world over the last century. During this time, the world population has grown at a phenomenal rate, with efficient and heavy fishing, which is technology-driven, meeting the increasing demands for food. As a consequence, Many fishing stocks in the European waters, from the Atlantic to the North Sea and the Mediterranean, are now on the verge of collapse. But the problem is not restricted to European waters. It's a situation that's all too clear all around the world. Fish stocks in the Pacific Ocean, for example, are now on the verge of collapse due to a combination of overfishing and natural changes in ocean ecology. And there's another reason behind the increased demand for fish, and that is the changes in the eating patterns of different countries. Certain countries have a long tradition of fishing, for example, the southern European countries, but eating patterns have changed in countries like the United Kingdom, where fish was once considered as food for the poor rather than the rich. People have been turning to fish as a cheap and healthy alternative to meat, driving up demand and depleting stocks. Food scares like BSE and foot and mouth disease have also driven people away from eating meat, which again is invariably replaced by fish. Before the speaker continues, look at questions 37 to 40. As you listen, complete the table. Write no more than three words for each answer. Another important reason is that a sizable proportion of the catch from modern trawlers or fishing boats is thrown away. Nets quite often land fish that are not wanted and which are thrown back into the sea dead. Discarded nets and other traps are responsible for the deaths of many fish. Our seas, like the rest of our environment, are littered with rubbish, which also destroys lots of fish. And fish are also being changed by the chemicals dumped into the oceans, as well as by overfishing, so the size of certain species is decreasing. More then have to be fished to produce a decent catch. And the solution? Well, there has to be more than one answer to the problem. Fish farms provide a partial solution, but the quality of the fish is usually inferior to those in the wild. Reducing the amount of fish that any one trawler or fishing boat is allowed to land is the most effective, but also the most unpopular measure. Countries in Europe like Spain rely heavily on fishing and are naturally against any step which restricts their catch. 
But if the depletion of fishing stocks continues, there will be no fish left to fish. Take the disappearance of cod from the great banks off Newfoundland, which was once the richest cod fishing area in the Atlantic. After a dramatic fall in the cod population for some unknown reason, a ban was imposed, which, it was hoped, would lead to a repopulation of the cod stocks. The cod did not return, and many fishermen were put out of work. This is a scenario which we do not want to be repeated on a large scale. Now, if you look at this table on the screen, you can see where I've marked the area. That's the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.